Was everybody going so slow? So, what the hell was I going to talk about while I'm sitting in this traffic? So, I named the moto blog Machalayo NYC. What the hell does Machalayo mean? It's Italian for butcher. And I picked that because, how you doing? pick that because I used to be a butcher. I uh, worked in food a lot of my life and then I went to Italy and worked for a pretty amazing guy in a little town called Panzano in Chianti. You can uh, you guys can look it up and figure out the rest but uh, yeah so then I went and worked for this butcher in Italy, and then I moved to New York to be a butcher. I was a butcher for a while, and hung around a lot of great chefs, and then uh, decided I wanted to be in the kitchen more. And here we are today. I'm a sous chef in New York City, and uh, I still consider myself more of a butcher than a chef. I'm a butcher who also cooks. A butcher who happens to cook. That would be me. Let's get behind this guy in the BMW. And so yeah, so Machalayo means butcher, so I guess I'm a butcher. And NYC, well, if you haven't figured that out yet, I don't know what to tell you. But hopefully, when I'm not working, commuting like I am today, take some cool trips, and go eat some meat, talk to some of my butcher and chef friends, and show you guys some interesting stuff, maybe show you something new. If you have any questions about meat, how to cook it or cut it, I'm sure the comment section is going to be off the hook. Right? Off the hook? Anybody? Is this thing on? Yeah. Why not? Let's talk about meat. I was trying to explain to someone the other day why you uh, let your steaks rest. And the uh, poor guy was, you know, had a really nice piece of meat. And he overcooked it. And he wanted it medium rare. Medium rare, the general understanding is. This is about 125 degrees. So you want to cook your meat to 125 degrees. Which is a lot easier said than done. Because meat does something that is known as carrying. Meat likes to carry. When you take a hot piece of meat off the grill or out of the oven or out of the frying pan, it's going to continue to cook. It's not just going to stop. So if you stick your thermometer in there and you're trying to get it to 125 and it's on the grill or in the oven, and then you take it out and you let it rest, guess what's going to happen? It's going to carry to 130, 135, maybe 140, depending on the, the, the cut of the meat, the size. The bigger the piece of meat, the more it's going to carry over a longer period of time. So, I told my friend, 
that was having problems. If he wanted his steak to be medium rare, and he was doing about a two pound ribeye, which is a big piece of meat. And mind you, all butchers, their methods are like their children. You love your own and you hate everyone else's because you think they're annoying and ugly. So what I suggested for him to do was put this piece of meat on the grill, get it seared or marked, and get it to about uh, 100 degrees. Now if it carries, it's only going to carry to, you know, maybe 115, which is just above rare, or rare itself. But you want to let it rest. So you take that piece of meat off at 100 and let it rest. You get your other shit together if you're having a dinner party, which I hope with a two pound ribeye, you're not just feeding yourself and one other person. Then get your potatoes and your sides and get everyone at the table. And that last little bit while you're getting ready and everyone's getting sat down and you want to make a nice presentation, you throw that steak back in the oven for maybe two, three more minutes. Nice hot oven, we're talking about 400 degrees. And it will, by the time you carve into it at the table side, a la Norman Rockwell painting, should be at a perfect 125 degrees medium rare. Now granted, I can't be there to help you, so you're just going to have to do your best. But believe me, let your meat rest. Don't poke it or prod it or cut into it. That's another one. I'm going to cut into it. And then some people don't cut into it because you're going to let all the juice out. That's why you let it rest so the blood thickens up, which is not actually, uh, not actually what happens there. If you cook a steak and you cut into it, all of the blood isn't going to come rushing out. One, because the animal's dead and that piece of meat has either been hang drying or packed in cryovac. It's not pumping any more blood. It's like if you take a sponge and you soak it, saturate it in water, and you put it on a plate, and then you cut the sponge in half, all of the water is not going to come running out of that sponge. And it's very similar for a piece of meat. What you're letting happen by letting the steak rest is you're letting it carry, and you're letting it get to that proper temperature and not overcook. Okay? So what have we learned? Don't burn shit. And if you want something at 125 degrees, if you want it medium rare, pull it off at rare, let it rest, it'll get there. I can just feel everyone disagreeing with me right now. But I've cooked a lot of meat every night, professionally, and at home. And it works pretty good for me. And shit doesn't come back in the restaurant either. Everybody's happy. So I think if you're gonna have steak and you're gonna have four friends over, don't get four one pound steaks. Jesus, get off my ass, taxi cab. Wow, I need the rear view camera for that shit. Don't do it. So instead of getting four one pound New York strips, uh, <laughs> that wasn't a green for you. Uh, instead of getting four steaks, get one two pound steak. And maybe sear it in a nice cast iron and throw it into a hot oven and keep an eye on it. And the best way to get your steak to the proper temperature is by using a thermometer. You know, there's some, a good chef, a good cook, can cook a piece of meat and know when it's done by touching it or uh, maybe poking something in there and feeling it to his lip. A lot of, a lot of guys like to do that and put a cake tester in and then they feel if it's warm or hot or cold. But a great chef uses a thermometer because when you're spending good money 
on a good piece of meat that used to be a live animal that died so you could eat it why would you want precision to be an option go down to the grocery store go online get yourself a decent thermometer you know 10 bucks 15 bucks and tempt your meat know where you're at it'll make you a better cook and you also probably learn a little bit more about your oven and what it's capable of and how long it takes and pretty soon yeah that's okay you can feel when stuff's about done but if you want it to be perfect then precision is always the answer so what did we learn today let your shit rest and buy a thermometer doesn't have to be expensive just has to be right so let's review take the meat out a few degrees before it's the temperature that you want it to be and let it rest let it rest because it's gonna rise in temperature you know what temperature it is because you used a thermometer right great Foods van. Kind of slowing shit down. Oh no, don't. Uh, I could have caught the light. Thanks, man.